I got it. You better get off me. Hey, H. Chill out. Why is he touching me? Hey, I got it. Hey, I got it on film, bro. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Bro, let hey. 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 All right. Hey, no. Hey, Without the thin blue line, who would put their hands around your kid's neck for no freaking reason? Here's the deal. Here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. So here's the deal. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. So here's the deal. 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 Either give me your ID or you go to jail. How about that? Catch me outside. How about that? How about that? How about that? Here's the deal. Welcome back to the Here's the Deal Channel. All right, I wanted to show you this video. It comes from 2016, so it's a little bit old, but it's still very much in play. Without police, who would put their hands on your kid's neck and violently oppress him and arrest him and kidnap him and cage him? Because that's what happened to this kid. This kid's name is Jordan Lloyd. And apparently Jordan was riding his bike on the sidewalk and Merced police didn't like that since they're policy enforcers and they don't really care about human beings. They decided to institute the policy and use violence to do it. Now, no violence happens before the police show up. That's the important thing. And while some people may watch this video and have a problem with the way Jordan Lloyd talks to the police officers, maybe there's a background, maybe there's something in Jordan Lloyd's history, something that he's seen or something that he's experienced as he's personally interacted with officers in the past. I don't know, I'm spitballing here. Maybe there's something that happened to him in the past that put a bad taste in his mouth and he has no respect for officers. I could understand that. There's plenty of videos that we've watched with police officers where they don't deserve your respect and they deserve for you to talk them in talk to them in a derogatory way. So that may be what's happening here. I don't know, but I do know this. No criminal activity happened until the Merced Police Department showed up. Uh, and what's funny is, in this video, you're gonna see the frontline police representative is a female, and her name is Officer Gonzalez. No, it's not Gonzalez, her name is Officer Martinez. Gonzalez is the male officer who arrives on the scene and within a second puts his hands on the neck of Jordan Lloyd. So watch this, I find it laughable that they will take a female police officer, put her on the front lines and expect her to actually stand up to a male, you know, suspect or supposed assailant. And this kid ain't a big kid at all. He's very skinny, but he was able to elude this female police officer a couple times. Let's take a look at this. I am about to leave, but it's no Give me your no ID sense. so that I can fight you. I am not going to give you my ID because I did not do nothing wrong. Officer. I am Adam 11 from... So you can go ahead and arrest me. Adam like, I don't care, Adam, you can arrest 11. me for riding right on the right. sidewalk. Bro, okay, no, I'm telling sense. you right Officer in Martinez. Merced police. You yes, you do. I don't have to give you Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Why? What law says So that, that I can... 400 block of West Bank. This, this this cop right here looks like she's fresh out of high school. What is going on here? I constantly talk about the fact that cops don't necessarily become psychopaths, but it does appear it's the other way around. Psychopaths see that there's this gap, there's this space that needs to fill, this authoritative space, and they want to fill it. They want to step in that ring. They want to don the ring of power. They want to be able to be in a position to tell people what to do, whereas in regular life, they would never be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. So they've got this perceived idea of legitimized societal authority where even other people look at the uniform badge and gun at the authority of the state going, oh, Officer Martinez here has the authority to do what she's doing. And that is the comfort that she takes. She's got qualified immunity given to her by the state, or at least this perceived, this perception of qualified immunity. And she's treating another person like she would never, ever come up to somebody on a sidewalk and do what she's doing. But because she's got the power, 
She abuses her power. And it's not so much that power corrupts, but power attracts the corruptible people who want to put their hands on you for some reason and, and use as a justification. Well, you violated our policy that that puts me in the right. See, that's the problem with the idea of government. It's this idea that Martinez and Gonzalez, who's about to appear, appear in frame, they believe that they have the right to rule you. And they also believe that you, this bicycler on the sidewalk has the obligation to obey their rulership or in their minds in Martinez and Gonzalez's mind, you can be rightly punished and we're perfectly justified in doing what we're doing to you. That's why this is so egregious. This is what happens. This is what happens. This is what happens. So one of the officers knows me. So you need to give me your ID. Excuse me. You need to give me your ID. Excuse me. Okay. That's, there, there you go. That's the that's the crack. That's the that's the fix that they need. That's the addicted personality. You got you know we need your ID because the policy says so right here, buddy. You right you're back on the sidewalk. Hey, let me ask you a question. Was I harming somebody? No, but you, you, was I threatening? No, but you violated the policy. Was I damaging property and not paying for it? Was I disturbing anybody in any way? But here you are disturbing me. Here you are willing to put your hands on me. I haven't put my hands on it. I was minding my own business. Yeah, you may have this policy and there may be an argument to be made that it's dangerous to ride your bike on the sidewalk, but nobody seems to be objecting to this except for the cops who are the policy enforcers. You need to give me your ID. Give me your ID. Here we go. Hands on. Okay. There you go. And that right there is the moment at which a criminal activity took place. How do we know this? Do we need a code? Do we need a constitution? Do we need holy writ or something written down in some religious paper somewhere to tell us that this is wrong? Or do we just know inherently that it's wrong for a person to walk up to another person and put their hands on you? Yes, we know that. How do we know that? All we have to do is ask this question. Would N. Martinez want this guy to put his hands on her when she didn't think she was doing wrong? Absolutely not. Would Mr. Officer Gonzalez have a problem with somebody putting his hands around his neck when Officer Gonzalez hasn't done anything wrong? Absolutely not. It's self-evident. We know this activity is wrong. And we know this right here is a violation of life, liberty, the and the pursuit of happiness. And you'll see she drops his bike on the ground. So this is a violation of somebody else's property as well. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, letter, letter. There we go. Hey, it's good. I got it. Hey, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Don't touch me. I got it, bro. Don't touch me. Who do you think this is? I got it. You better get off me. Hey, hey. Chill out. Chill out. Why is he touching me? Hey, I got it. Hey, I got it on film, bro. Now, some, the, what I like about this is that people often say, now, if this was a white male cop, against a black guy, they would say, hey, the problem here is systemic racism. Not necessarily the case. Looks like she's Hispanic. You know, her last name is Martinez. She looks Hispanic to me. I don't have a problem with that. She's not a male. She's a female. So she's a Hispanic female going after a black guy. You know, if you want to call this racism, you can, but I think it's not racism, but authoritarianism. This is a power tripping psychopath who wants to bring somebody else to heal. It doesn't matter the color of the skin in this situation. Clearly doesn't matter. Just like what happened in Memphis with the jump out crew and those five black cops jumping out and uh, basically decimating Tyree Nichols out on the, the sidewalk. And if we didn't have, if we didn't have the street camera surveillance camera, I bet we never would have got the body camera of that. So this isn't a situation where racism is in play. At least it doesn't look like it. Of course, N. Martinez could be as racist as possible and she might not like black guys. I don't know. But seems to me what's obvious here, what's dangling right in front of our faces is this is a power issue. This is a power struggle. This is a power corrupts issue. This is an authoritarian issue. Hey, I got it. Hey, I got it on film, bro. It's all good. 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 Yes, you are. I'm not giving you nothing. Bro. Let hey. Did you see how easy that was? This guy is not a big guy. And yeah, he's taller than her, but he's pretty skinny. 
Do you think a female officer has a chance against any male suspect? Not at all. Look how easy he got out of her hold. No, it's no. all good. Yes, you are. No, I'm not giving you nothing. Give me and Let you know what? An argument can be made that it is more dangerous for you to be in the presence of a pig with a ponytail than a male law enforcement officer. Why? Because she is, she knows she's overpowered. He, the, the assailant or suspected suspect knows that she's overpowered. Everybody watching knows that she's overpowered, easily overpowered. And she would be more apt to maybe be justified in using her service weapon. And that's scary because they will use it and then say, Oh, I thought it was a taser. I thought I was pulling out my taser. I thought I was using less lethal, you know, the non-lethal option. This is a dangerous situation for this guy. Hey, get off me. What is you doing? What is you doing? What is you doing? Give me your ID now. Give me your ID now. What do you think about that, Dakota? Give me your ID now. Put your hands behind your back. Right. Here we go. Put your hands behind your back. Now. Here comes Gonzalez. You're talking to you? hey. Boom. What's that? What's that right there? What is that? Watch this. Hey. What is that? What what kind of hold is that? Is that an authorized Merced Police Department hold? Gonzalez, Officer Gonzalez now with Martinez holding his arms behind his back has his hands around this guy's neck. What the frick is going on here? Did the guy rob a bank? No. Did he hold up a, a school? No. Was he doing something? Was he, was he shooting at passengers or passersby? Nope. He was riding his bike on the sidewalk. Oh my God, get him, tackle him, put your hands around his neck, strangle him. Do you hear hey. me All right, hey, no, hey, Joseph. Right. Right. All right, it's all good. This is what they do to black people, bro. You see what they This is Merced. Oh, I hate that he went there. This is what they do to black people. They would have done the same thing, and we have seen them do the same thing to white people. Do black people get the more of a brunt of it? It doesn't really matter at this point. Daniel Shaver was a white guy complying with every one of Philip Brailsford and his henchmen's rapid fire commands, and he, he is no longer with us today. James Boyd was out in the desert sleeping, minding his own business. He was a homeless guy, white guy, scruffy guy, not black. He's not with us today. I mean, you could just, you could come up with example after example. Johnny Wheatcroft, the, the, what was it? The Glendale Police Department. I can't remember the cop's name, but he was featured on Live PD as an upstanding officer. Tases Johnny Wheatcroft in the private parts in front of his kids, screaming kids multiple times. Johnny Wheatcroft is a white guy. It's not, this isn't a, this isn't a racism problem. It's an authoritarian problem. Come on, Merced police. Merced police. Merced police. Still got his hands around his neck. Amazing. Look at this. Please. Still got his hands around his neck. And two officers are unable to detain this skinny guy. Merced police. Hey, we are. Turn around. Who do you call when you're in trouble? I'm not doing that. Turn around. Turn around. Who do you call when you're in trouble? Not you. Not ever. I'm not. I'm not using 911. I'm using 1911. Or I'm using 357, but it ain't going to be you. Witness it. Hey, we're not talking to you. I'm, I'm not doing you either, bro. All right, bro. All right, bro. Now they're coming out against the cameraman. The cameraman's not doing anything wrong. He's standing on a public sidewalk. He's not interfering with police activity. And this guy right here is about to go after him, too. All right, bro. He was riding his bike. Bro, I got to get up out of here, bro. Get up off me, nigga. Would you stop? Get up off me, though. Why are you, why are you doing this? What, am I, what did I do to you? Come on now, I'm a typical black person. Going home, this is, this is what we see on Facebook. I don't want to argue with you, but you know what happened? Yeah, I know exactly. He's refusing, refusing to apply to the officer's, officer's request. So did you hear the do-gooder? Yeah, he refused to comply with the officer's request. You know when an officer gives you a request or, or issues a command, you got to comply with the authority. What's his ID? That's it. If you would have just given up your right to be secure in your person, it would have been all over. Come on. Hey, dude, that's how we lose our rights. That's how we lose all freedoms. That's how we welcome in totalitarianism and tyranny and communism and Marxism and all that other crap. That's how you do it. That's how you lose everything. Get off me then. Sit down. Okay, can you get off me? Sit down. Bro, why are you squeezing my fucking cuffs? Look at that. Sit down. Look at that. Oh, 
Why is you taking me, nigga? Stop fucking taking me, bruh. How many times you got me fucked up? Sit down. I don't you care, nigga. Okay. You squeezing my cuffs and you fucking squeezing me too fucking hard, bruh. You got me Back fucked up, up dude. Sit. And they will. They will mess you up. They can cause, and in many cases do cause, nerve damage in people. Those cuffs, like that cop told Zach Bryan, they weren't made for comfort. Okay, what does that mean? They were made for what? They were made for torture. Therefore, they're not just hand cuffs, and they don't even go on your hands. They're wrist cuffs, but they're torture cuffs. They're not meant, they're not comfort cuffs. They could be, but they don't want them to be because they want to inflict pain on you. It doesn't matter if you, you're guilty. It doesn't matter if you're innocent. If you're a suspect in our eyes, we're going to torture you. So I don't doubt that he is putting the hurt on this guy. And this guy may have, I don't know, to this day, this was in 2016. What is that? Four or five, six, seven years ago? He may have debilitating nerve damage in his wrists and his arms right now. I yeah. swear to God, bro. He's sitting there. Officer Come Jay on, Gonzalez, stop. Merced Greg, Police. Get the fuck off me. Listen, Officer I'm Jay Gonzalez. Fuck off me. Merced Department. Get the fuck off me, nigga. Back up. Take yes, me sir. Yes, yes sir. Look, he's complying. Back up. He backs up. But that's not going to be in. Yes, yes, sir. That's not going to be the end for the camera guy. Hey. Ooh, what the? There we go. An another cop came kidding? up behind him. A third cop. And took him. Took him away. So that was... Gonzalez kicks Jordan's feet out from under him. The entire event was filmed by Lloyd's friend, 18 year old Bryce Snell until he was violently apprehended himself. And while this may be old footage from 2016, this is still happening today. How many times a day? I don't know. It's a lot. And the question is, are we going to continue to tolerate it? If you give up your rights, just so think things could go easy for you, you won't have rights. Your children won't have rights and your grandchildren won't have rights. And it'll all be because of you, because you decided, hey, I'm going to go ahead and comply with the authority. That's why America is America today, because the colonists refuse to comply with British rule. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. This video is brought to you by clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right, little Dakota sitting here about to fall asleep. I really appreciate you guys. Remember the price of freedom is now and will always be eternal vigilance and indifference to this notion is the means by which the people have and will secure their own oppression. I will see you guys in the next video.